I have already requested all the students, please turn off your microphone. Okay, so in the previous class, we have already discussed all the different types of simple operator. Like summation of two number, subtraction of two number. Yeah. Then the multiplication of two numbers, or you can use the division or modular division. After that, we have also discussed about the, some logical operator that is called the greater than, greater than equal to, less than, less than equal to, double equal to, and not equal to. Okay. So if you are writing single equal to means if you are writing a equal to five means basically we are going to store the five to a. If you are writing the single equal to, that is also called the assignment. But when you are writing double equal to means that is one type of operator that is used to compare the value of a with 5. If the value of a equal to 5, it will return you the value 1. Otherwise, it will return you the value 0. Clear? Otherwise, it will return you the value 0. Same like that if you are going to use any types of this logical operator, you will get only two output, either 0 or 1. 0 means this is a false statement. 1 means this is a true statement. Or if you are getting any value, means in generally, if you are getting zero, means that will consider a false statement. And if you are getting any non-zero value, non-zero value means that will consider as a true statement. So if you are getting five, that is a true statement. Six is also a true statement. If you are writing minus five, minus seven, all are considered as a true statements. Okay. So if you are going to consider non-zero value, means our whatever the logical expression is there, that is a correct logical expression. Or True. Okay. Now today we are going to start the flowchart diagram. Flowchart diagram is basically what, what is our objective. Once the requirement is complete, consistent, then we are going for the flowchart diagram. Okay. Flowchart diagram is whatever the requirement we have written in the terms of text, the same types of requirement we are going to represent in terms of flowchart diagram, in terms of flowchart diagram. And basically we will use these types of symbol when we are working for the flowchart yes. diagram. Each symbol has its own meaning. So first one is, if you are going for any types of computation, if you are going for any types of calculation, then we will use these types of rectangle box. Means if you are going for any types of calculation, means if you are writing a equal to a plus 5, or if you are writing 5 plus 5, or if you are going for any types of calculation, b equal to a plus 5 plus 10, something like that, then in this case, basically, we will go for the computation part. Decision means when you are making the decision, means if this condition is true. So as for example, if you are working for a student management system and you are going to find what is the grade of the student based on the marks of the student. What is the grade of the student based on the marks of the student? So in this case, basically, we are going to assume like that. If the student marks is greater than 90, then we will consider as a grade equal to A. Okay. So here we can write this type of decision box. Here we will write a condition. If marks greater than 90, then we will go for the A grade. Otherwise, again, we have to check. So as for example, now assume that we are working for a student management system. How to write? First, we will take this type of box. And then we'll write, if your marks greater than 90, if this condition is true, then we'll write this types of arrow. True, then we'll put, put something like that. We'll make grade equal to A. And after that, we'll also print grade value. If this condition is false, if this condition is false, then in this case, again, we will check if you, the student marks is greater than 80, then again, we will print grade equal to B. If this condition is false, this one is true, false, then again, we will go for the marks greater than something. But we will use only this symbol. This symbol means basically we are writing some logical expression where you will get only two output, either true or false. This is a decision statement. So where you will get only two output, that is called the true and false. False. So either you will get true or you will get false. Now, next one, input or output. If you are taking any input from the user or if you are going to display any message to the user, then in this case, basically, we will use these types of symbols. So we cannot use the computation symbol to take the input from the user. We cannot use this symbol to print the output to the user. You always use this symbol that is called the input and output symbol. Now, next one, your termination means when you are going to start and stop, then we 
use this type of symbol we cannot use the computation symbol to represent this is a starting point of your flow chart or this is a starting point of your program then we can use this types of symbol now we will come to this point now next one a predefined process so sometimes we are also using the predefined function so when you are using the predefined function predefined function means you are not writing the logic of the function the logic of the function is already defined and if you are using these types of predefined function or method then we will use these types of box we will use these types of box then the flow how the data and control is flowing throughout the program then we will use these types of symbols same like that if you are going to read the data from the document or any text file or if you are going to write the data to the text file then we will use these types of notation now next one your connector so when you are working for the larger project so as for example now we are working for the simple atm system atm system and we are going to draw we are going to draw flowchart diagram for atm system flowchart diagram for atm system simple so what is your procedure first we will write the start button so we will write this stuff this is your start okay so we will use this types of symbol that will represent the start we cannot use this one okay now after that we are going for the next step that is called the input what is the next step we are asking the user to enter your card enter card when the user will enter the card then we are going to check whether the card is valid or not so here we are writing cg means card validation whether the card is valid or not if card is valid if card is valid we are writing valid means if this card is true means that is a true card then in this case again we are going to ask the user to enter pin enter pin okay once the user will enter pin now we are going to check whether this pin is valid or not so that is called the pin validation pin is valid or not if pin is valid if this is not valid again we will come to this point again if this is not valid then again we will come to this point again we will go for the starting point so again we are asking whether your pin is valid or not if this pin is valid then in this case what we can do again we will ask the user to select any option so we are going to select any option now after that the user has selected one option and after that we are going to check if the user has selected option one means they are interested to withdraw the amount and if the user has selected option two means they are interested to deposit some amount okay so now again we are going to check whether the user has entered one or zero whether the user has entered one and zero so now again we are going to check now you can see after that we cannot write any more boxes because whatever the requirement whatever the requirement we are getting that is a complex requirement and we cannot draw the flow chart in a single page then in this case basically we will use the concept called connector so here what we can do we will use here a one connector and after that in the next page again we will start from here so this is basically used to join two different flow chart diagram this is basically used to join two different flow chart diagram that is also called connector so we will use these types of symbols just to can see we are going to use these types of symbol when it, whatever the flow chart you are going to construct that is not possible to construct in a single info sheet then in this case we will go for the next page and we will use these types of connector we will use these types of connector next one preparation is basically what we are going to do when we are going to use any type of function then in this case before the function we are going to prepare the function we are going to prepare all the variable what are the variable needed by this function then we will use this types of symbol that is called the preparation okay but normally what are the symbol we are going to use in the algorithm computation decision input output termination then document connector float line so basically we are going to use this types of symbol predefined process means as for example now in that you are working for some simple program to find a square root of 5 a square root of 5 so we are not writing the function we are not writing the logic for a square root of 5 we are not writing the logic of the square root of 5 directly we are using this function directly we are using the predefined function so as for example print a print a function in c you are using the print a function to print the value in c you are using the print a function to print the value so that is called the predefined function you are not writing the logic for the print a function you are not writing the logic for the scanf 
function so that by basically we are using the predefined function document means sometimes we are reading the data from text doc document instead of asking the user to enter the data we are reading the data from text doc document then in this case basically we will use these types of symbol okay so basically when you are using these types of symbol means you are asking the user to enter any document or you are going to display the output or whatever the output you are going to get you will store in the word document Preparation is basically when you are going to use some function, and that function needs some value. So, as for example, you are working for area of circle. So what is the area of circle? Anyone? What is the area of circle? What is the area of circle? Anyone? Just put in the chat box. You cannot use your microphone. Simply will put in the chat box. Okay. So, what is the area of the circle? Pi r square. Okay. So, basically, we are getting the pi r square. Before going to calculate this value. first we have to define what is the value of pi first we have to define what is the value of pi this is called the preparation step so basically what we are going to do before going to this step at least we have to define what is the exact value of pi we are going to consider so that is called the preparation step okay now same like that connector connector basically when we will use the connector when you are working for the complex flow chart diagram and that is not possible to draw in a single page then we will go for the connector so as for example now you see some examples this is simple example if you are going for the addition of three number if you are going for addition of three number how to start first one you will start then you will ask the user to enter the value so we are going to read the value read a b c read a b c after that what is the value present in a we are writing a plus b plus c means whatever the value we will get here and here we are using the single equal to that is called the assignment so whatever the value will go get for a plus b plus c we are going to store in s we are going to store in s okay yes connector can be used to connect more than two flow chart diagram okay now next one after that we are going to display the value of s then what we will write print s we will write print s and after that we will write stop okay same like that if you are going to write the algorithm that algorithm we will write the step by step procedure so what is that first one is start then we are going for read a b c s equal to a plus b plus c print s and then we are going to write stop so this is a algorithm and this one is your flow chart diagram so now we'll try how to draw the flow chart diagram that will take two input from the user number 1 and number 2 and it will print some product and average it will print some product and average addition is not a function we are using operator we are using simple operator that is not a function we are using operator function means when you are defining the logic that is called a function print here we are not here simple print we are using we are not using the print function simple print we are using simple print print means to display the message okay so now can you please draw please turn off your microphone okay now how to draw the flow chart diagram anyone how to draw the flow chart diagram that will take two input from the user and it will print the three output that is called the summation then product and then average then in this case how to follow the procedure anyone what is the procedure we will follow okay so first one first step we always start with start button so we are going to write starting point so this is your start okay after that the next step we are going to ask the user to enter the two number so we are going to read the value uh, read a and b okay so we are asking the user to enter two value whatever the user will enter so as for example the user has entered 10 20 we will store 10 to a this your a and we will store 20 to b we will store 20 to b after that the next step we are going for three objective first one summation second one product and third one we are going for the average value okay now can we write like that after that we are going for first we are writing here because this is a computation 
we are writing sum equal to a plus b then we can write here product product equal to a into b and then we are writing average equal to average equal to a b equal to a plus b divided by 2 okay average equal to a plus b divided by 2 after that we are going to print after that we are going to print here we are printing print a comma a comma a b and then we are going to write the stop button now can we say this flow chart is correct can we say how many are saying like that this flow chart is correct there is no any problem with this flow chart how many are saying there is no any problem with this flow chart okay why this why there is a problem with this flow chart just you can see the flow chart definition of the flow chart the first one well defined input well defined output there is no any problem with that but clear and unambiguous means there is no any ambiguity just you can see here when you are getting the read a plus a comma b after that either you can choose any one of the path either you can go for this path this path this path but you can it is not possible like that you will go for the all the three path means there is something confusion is there we are not going to define in which case you have to follow which path in which case you have to follow which path we are not going to define so there is something problem is there so this flow chart is not a correct flow chart okay so how to draw the correct flow chart just you can see we will write here what we will write here first one you are at start then we will go for the read a comma b then we are going for the next one summation equal to a plus b then after that we are going for the average average equal to summation divided by 2 then we are going for multiplication equal to a into b and after that print we are going to write s a b comma m and then we are going to stop stop okay so then we are going to stop clear so here what we are going to do first we are asking the user to enter a and b so user has entered 10 and 20 so value of a equal to 10 and value of b equal to 20 then we are writing a is equal to a plus b again we are creating one case and we are storing what is the summation of this two value 10 plus 20 you are getting 30 then we are writing average equal to a divided by 2 what is the value of s 30 divided by 2 you are getting 15 then we are writing multiplication equal to a into b you are getting 200 and after that we are printing the value 20 30 and 200 20 30 and 200 okay we can also put in the single box there is no any problem we can also put in the single box okay so we can also put in the single box sum equal to a plus b average equal to a plus b divided by 2 and multiplication equal to a into b we can also put in the single box there is no any problem with that okay so we can also put in the single box after that Basically, we are going to write some test cases. Basically, we are going to write some test cases to test that our program is logically correct or not. Our algorithm or flowchart is logically correct or not. Okay. So, before writing the test case, first we are finding the path. Path is nothing but the sequence of noted nodes, sequence of node from start point to end point. So, what is the path to reach from a start point to end point or a start to a stop? So, basically, we will give the number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. What is the path? First, we are going from 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, 5 to 6, 6 to 7. This is a one path. Okay. Path means sequence of node from first point to last point sequence of node from first point to last point okay after that we will write one test cases we will write one input such a way that it will cover all the nodes present in this path so as for example when you are writing a equal to 10 and 20 then definitely first it will start from a start it is also covering this value because here we are taking the input from the user then we are also going for a s equal to a plus b s divided by 2 then we are going for a into b then we are printing the value then we are going for a stop so when you are taking a equal to 10 and 20 then in this case we are going to cover this part 
Now, what is your expectation? What is your actual expectation? When you are giving the A equal to 10 and B equal to 20, what is your actual expectation? Our actual expectation is sum equal to 30, then average equal to 15 and product equal to 200. This is our actual expectation. Okay. Now, the same thing you will try here. What is the output you are getting when you are taking A equal to 10 and 20 in this flowchart diagram? So, what is the output we are getting? Here, we are getting the output A is equal to same, we are getting 30, 15, 200. Here we will match with our actual value. This one is matching. Now we can say our flow chart is logically correct. Our flow chart is logically correct. Okay. Now, some student is asking for this one. Okay. So, why this flow chart, previous flow chart, where we have already constructed, what is the problem with the previous flow chart? What is the problem with this one? Anyone, what is the problem with this one that we have already defined? What is the problem? Because here we are getting some confusion. We are not going to decide which path you have to follow. Either we will go for this one, this one, this one. So that's why if when you are going to draw flow chart, there is no any confusion. There is no any ambiguity in the flow chart. Okay. So that's why this one is wrong. Clear? Now we are going for one important point that is called the, this one is clear how to construct the, this one. Okay. Same like that we are going to convert the Fahrenheit to Celsius then we will use this one. Now, next one, we are going to find what is the maximum, what is the maximum and minimum value of two number? What is the maximum and minimum value of two number? Okay. What is the maximum and minimum value of two number? Okay. So, what is the maximum value and minimum value of two number? Okay. So, in this case, first we will define what is our input. So, input is basically two number. Okay. So, uh, means what are the input the user will enter? Either the user will enter 10, 20 and after that, what is the expectation of the user? When the user will enter 10 and 20, what is the expectation? They will get maximum equal to 20 and minimum equal to 10. Same like that if the user has entered 20, 10, then in this case, again, the user will get maximum equal to 20 and minimum equal to 10. This is the our expectation. Clear? This is our expectation. In the first one, the user has enter first minimum number and second one maximum. Again, we are getting maximum equal to 20, minimum equal to 20. Second case, the first the user has enter maximum number, then minimum number. Again, we are getting the right output. Okay. So basically, our objective is to take two number from the user, and after that, you have to print what is the maximum value and what is the minimum value. What is the maximum value and what is the minimum value? Okay. Now some students are asking why not we are going to use here decision okay what is your objective try to understand what is your objective your objective is to calculate summation average and product all three your objective is not to calculate either summation average and product your objective is not like your objective is to calculate all three values so here we cannot write any decision here we cannot write any decision Decision means when we are going to check two values, when we are going to select any one out of two, then we are going for decision. Now we will focus on this point. So how to draw? So the step, first step is same. We are going to write start button. Here start. After that, the next step, we are going to take the input. So we are taking the input. Okay. So we are writing read A comma B. Okay. So whatever the value entered by the user, first value it will store in A and second value it will store in B. After that, you need one condition. What is the condition? A greater than equal to B. If this condition is true, can you tell me what is the maximum value and what is the minimum value? What is the maximum value and what is the minimum value? Anyone, if this condition is true, what is the maximum value and what is the minimum value? Anyone? What is the maximum value we can write? If this condition is true, definitely A is your maximum value and minimum value equal to B. Here we are writing true statement. If this condition is false, if this condition is false, then we are writing, we will always use these types of arrow. We are writing maximum equal to B and minimum equal to A. And after that, we will come to this point and then we will write here, Stop. Clear? Then we are writing here. Stop. Okay. 
we are going to check so as for example now assume that if you are writing a greater than b a greater than b if you are taking tan t what is the output you will get if you are taking tan t so here basically we are going to consider if tan is greater than equal to tan then in this case we will consider maximum equal to a and minimum equal to b we can consider or you can also write one logic if this condition is true again we are going to check whether the values are equal or not you can also write okay so basically we are going to get here okay so you are going to write the print statement so here we will write the print statement here we will write print print maximum and minimum and after that we are going for stop okay after that we are going for the stop okay now we are going to check whether our flow chart is logically correct or not 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 okay now can you tell me what is the possible path to reach start node to stop node you can i have already mentioned i think you are already forgotten about the previous step whatever we have already discussed i have already mentioned either you will write in the single step or you will write in the double step that will not matter so either you will write max equal to a then the next step min equal to b or you will write in the single step that is also possible okay so in this case basically we are getting the two path basically we are getting the two path first one 1 2 3 4 6 and 7 now you can see this is most important point just you can see this is most important point when you are going for the next path you have already visited one path when you are going for the next path then in the next path at least one node is new that you have not covered in the previous path that at least one node is new so now we are going for 1 2 3 5 6 7 now you can see we are getting at least one node 5 is new that is not covered in the previous path okay now for each path we have to write one test cases for each path we have to write one test case so as for example we are talking about this path we are talking about this path what is the test cases we will write we are going to write 20 t okay so value of a equal to 20 and value of b equal to 10 how it will flow first start what is the value of a 20 10 then we are going for the a greater than b condition is true if the condition is true it will go to this step maximum equal to a minimum equal to b and again we are printing maximum and minimum then we are going for a stop so what value it will print 20 10 now we are going to check with our actual value when we are going to enter 20 10 we are getting maximum equal to 20 minimum equal to 20 now here you can see here we are also getting maximum equal to 20 minimum equal to 20 means this path is logically correct there is no any problem in this path now we will go for the second path second path what is the input we will give 10 20 now we will check the condition condition is false then in this case it will print the value 20 10 it will print the value now you can see again we are getting the same value means this program is logically correct this program is logically correct there is no any problem with this program okay now we are going for the next one at least you will try if you are going to find if you are going to find what is the maximum of three number what is the maximum of three number a b c what i have already mentioned you are not getting my point what i have already mentioned if you are getting 10 greater than equal to 10 then in this case we will consider maximum equal to 10 and minimum equal to 10 something like that we are going to consider if we are going to explore more then again you will write here condition again you will write here decision statement and you will check whether this values are same or not again you will write a double equal to b if this condition is true you will print both are equal if this condition is not true then you will print this value but in this case we are only going to check whether what is the maximum and minimum we are not going to check whether these two numbers are equal or not whether these two numbers are equal or not this is our requirement our requirement is only to check the maximum and minimum that's it yes that in this case maximum and minimum we are getting the same value if you are getting the same value what is your conclusion if you have the two number and if you are getting the same value what is your conclusion both are same if maximum equal to 10 and minimum equal to 10 what is your conclusion both are same okay 
Now, here you can see, just you can see, after that, we are also going to write the algorithm. Just you can see, this is your step. And after that, we are going to write the algorithm. Okay. So how to write the algorithm? This is a step-by-step -step procedure. So first one, we are going to write first point. That is called the start. Second point, we are going for read A, B. Now, third point, just you can see, this is a very important point, just you can see. When you are writing these types of decision, then we'll write if condition. If, if A greater than equal to B. Decision means if statement. If A greater than equal to B. If this condition is true, then what are the statement we are going to execute? Maximum equal to A and minimum equal to B. Means if this condition is true, then we will give the numbering 3.1. 3.1 means if this condition is true, then it will execute 3.1. What is the 3.1? maximum equal to a 3.2 maximum minimum equal to b okay after that if you are going for else part then we'll write here four else if this condition is false then in this case it will execute 4.1 4.1 what is the maximum value maximum equal to b 4.2 max minimum equal to a and then we are going for five point print max comma main and then we are going for six point stop okay so how to write 3.12 means if this condition is true then it will execute maximum a b then it will execute this statement if this condition is false directly it will go to the else statement if this condition is false then it will execute this two statement because we have written 4.1 4.2 if this condition is true it will not execute this Three statements. It will not execute this three statement directly. It will come to the fifth statement. Clear? So now we'll try. Three point one means if this condition is true, it will go to the three point one, three point two, three point three. Means whatever the statement you have written, that will write here three point one two three. Means if this condition is true, it will execute this statement. So you can easily find what are the statement inside this if statement. What are the statements inside this if statement? Three point one and three point two. Now we'll try how to find the maximum of three number A B C. If the user has entered A B C, how to find the maximum? Maximum of three number. Anyone? Just we will try. You have two minutes time. Just we will try. What is how to find? So what is the first objective? Yes. Then we'll write the simple, just you can see. This one, here if else is not required, we are writing the simple that we have already written in the previous one. Somewhere I have already written one, two, three, four, we will get. Question is, simply you have to find maximum of three number. When the user will enter 10, 20, 30, our expectation is to get 30. Or if the user will enter 10, 30, 20, our output is 30. If the user will enter 30, 10, 20, our output is 30. Okay. So how to write? Just you can see what is the procedure to write. Okay. So first, our objective is what is the input here we are going to take? Input, we are taking three numbers. Okay. Three numbers we are taking. So first, we will write here start. Now we are going for start. Okay. After start, we are going to read the value. Now we are going to read A, B, C. Okay. So whatever the user will enter, we are going to store in A, B, C. Now we are going to use the if statement. Now we are going to use if statement. Okay. Now we are going to use if statement. Okay. So what is the if statement we are going to use? Just you can see, first we are writing A greater than equal to B. Or simple, we are going to check it. A greater than equal to B. Okay, so first we are writing A greater than equal to B. Our condition is only to find the maximum number. Our condition is not to check. Yes, that we will see. That we will see. That we will see. First we will focus on this concept. That we will see. 
we can write two, three, four, five. We can also write infinity times. That is not a problem. Now, here you can see if this condition is true, if this condition is true, can you tell me what is your what is the possibility of maximum? If this condition is true, what is the possibility of maximum? Anyone? Can we say b is your maximum? Can we say b become maximum? Anyone? Can we say b become maximum? B is not a maximum. Either a or c is maximum. We cannot say like that a is maximum because one number is left. So now we can write here again. We are going to check the condition again whether a is greater than equal to c or not. If this condition is true, if this condition is true, which one is your maximum? Anyone? What is the value of maximum? If this condition is true, can we write maximum equal to a? If this condition is false, then what is the value of maximum? We can write maximum equal to c. Okay. Now, if this condition is false, then what is your possibility of maximum? If this condition is false, definitely a is not a maximum. Either b or c is maximum. So now again we are going to check. We have the confusion again. We are going to check b greater than equal to c. If this condition is true, then we'll write max equal to b. And if this condition is false, then we'll write max equal to c. Now we are going to join all in one place, and after the, that, we are going to print print max, print max, and then we are going for stop. Clear? Then we are going to stop. So just you can see how we are going to read. First one is start. Then we are reading the value a, b, c. If a greater than equal to b, then we are going for this path. And if this condition is true, we are going for this path. Then can you write what are the unique paths from start node to end node? Anyone? What are the unique paths? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Can you write what are the possible unique paths from start node to end node? What is the first path we are going to write? 1, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then we are going for 10. Then we are going for 11. Okay, now how many are saying four possible paths? How many are saying four unique paths? Just you can see, I have already mentioned the logic. I have already mentioned the logic. Okay, I have already mentioned the logic. How to find the unique path? Just you can see. So first one we are going to write 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 11. So we are going to write 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 11. This is path number 1. Now next one we are going for 1. 2, 3, then we are going for 4, 6, 10, 11. Then we are going for 1, 2, 3, then we are going for 7, 9, 10, 11. Then we are going for 1, 2, 3, 7, 8, 10, and 11. Okay, so these are the four paths are there. These are the four paths are there. Okay, now for each path, we have to write one test cases because our main objective is to prove that our flowchart is logically correct. Our flowchart is logically correct. Or same like that. Now assume that you are planning to visit. This is a place called Hyderabad and this one is your Bangalore. Okay, and there are four paths are there from Hyderabad to Bangalore. There are four paths are there, something like that. These are the four paths are there. Okay, now someone will ask you which path is the good path. Then in this case, how we can give the conclusion? What is our observation? At least if we have visited all the paths at least one time, then we can give our view. Then we can give our view. Otherwise, we cannot give any view regarding the path, though we have not have not covered, we cannot give any idea about that path. Same like that here, what we are going to do, first we'll write one test cases that will cover 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 11. So can you write one test cases that will cover 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 
10 and 11. Anyone? Can you write one test cases? Yeah, numbering you can write in any way. Numbering you can write in any way. That will not matter. Here we are giving one ID. This is the ID of this node. Now, can you write here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, we are going to take A equal to, so we are taking 10, 2, 3, 10, 2, 3. Now, we are going to check if the user had entered 10, 2, 3. What is the actual output? What is our actual expectation? Anyone? What is our actual expectation if the user had entered 10, 2, 3? What is our actual expectation? The output must be 10. Now, we are going to check. Start read A, B, C. A equal to 10, B equal to 20, C equal to again. We are getting, sorry, A, C, B equal to 2 and C equal to 3. Now we are going to check A greater than equal to B, 10 greater than equal to 2. Condition is true? Yes, condition is true. Now we will come to this place. 10 is greater than equal to 3. Condition is true? Condition is true. We are going to maximum equal to A. What is the maximum equal to A? 10. So it will print the value 10. Now you can see your flow chart is giving the output 10 and your actual output is also getting 10. Means there is no any problem with this path. The same like that we will write the test cases that will cover this path. Same like that we will write the test cases that will cover this path. And same like that we will write the test cases that will cover this path. And after four test cases, you can make one conclusion. Your program is logically correct. Your program is logically correct. There is no any problem with this program. Clear? Now, the same problem you can also write in the different way. Okay, just you can see. So some students are saying like that, can we write two conditions in one each statement? Yes, we can write. Now assume that if we are going to write A greater than equal to B and A greater than equal to C, if this condition is true, can you tell me what is the output you will get? If this condition is true, double and, we can always use double and, not a single and. Single and is different one. What is your output? Directly we can say maximum equal to A. Now again we are going to check. If this condition is false, if this condition is false, what is your maximum value? Anyone? If this condition is false, definitely A is not a maximum value. If this condition is false, definitely A is not a maximum value. We will check B greater than C, B greater than equal to C. If this condition is true, we will write maximum equal to B, else we will write the maximum equal to C. Okay. Now you can see how to draw the flowchart diagram. First one, we are going for a start. Second one, we are going to read A, B, C. Third one, we are writing one condition. What is the condition we are writing here? A greater than equal to B and A greater than equal to C. If this condition is true, whatever your doubt, simply will put in the chat box that we will discuss. If this condition is true, maximum equal to A. Maximum equal to A. If this condition is false, if this condition is false, again we are going to take, again we are going to take condition b greater than equal to c if this condition is true maximum equal to we are going to write b and if this condition is false we are going to write maximum equal to same like that in all place we are writing max maximum equal to c and we are going to find all the value then we will print max and then we will stop clear yeah whatever your doubt simply will put in the chat box and uh, Simply we'll put in the chat box. Can we use one condition? Cannot we use one condition. What do you mean by that? Yeah, we cannot write like that. There is no any condition like A greater than B greater than C. There is no any condition. There is no any expression like that. This is not a valid expression. So we cannot write like that. Okay. Now. In this case, again, if we are going to write, what is the total number of paths are possible? Anyone? What is the total number of paths? One, this one. Second path, if you are going for this one. And third path, if you are going for this one. And there are three paths are possible. I have already mentioned, please mute your microphone. <coughs>
Okay. Clear? Now, how to write the algorithm for this flowchart? Anyone, how to write the algorithm for this flowchart? We will get three paths, not the four paths. We will get three paths. Okay. How to write the algorithm for this flowchart? Anyone? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We can write like that. Okay. And based on that, you will write the path. If you are talking about the algorithm, how to write the algorithm? Just you can see how to write the algorithm. So now we are going to do this one. Okay. So now we can see the first point. First point, what we are going to write is start. Second point, read A, B, C. Third point, we are writing condition. If A greater than equal to B and, and A greater than equal to C. Okay, if A greater than equal to B and A greater than equal to C. If this condition is true, we are writing 3.1. What is the maximum value? Maximum equal to we are getting 8. If this condition is false, we are writing 4 means else. If this condition is false, we are going for 4.1. 4.1. What is the 4.1? Again, we are going to check the condition. If 4.1 means again condition is there. B greater than equal to C. If this condition is true, then we'll go for 4.1.1. What is your maximum? Maximum equal to B. If this condition is false, false else 4.2.1 maximum equal to C. Then we are going for the fifth point. What is that? Print maximum. And then we are going for six point stop. Just you can see how we are writing here. So what we are writing here, read. A, B, C. If this condition is true, only one statement will execute maximum equal to A. If this condition is false, what are the statements we will execute? We will execute these number of statements. First, we will go for 4.1. If B is greater than C. If this condition is true, we will only execute one statement because we have written 4.1.1. 4.1.1. So we will execute only this statement. If this condition is false, we will execute only one statement max equal to C. Max equal to C. And then we will print the value of max. And after that, we will write stop. Okay. And it means double and. If both are true, then it will return you true. That we have already discussed in the previous class. Double and means double and. If both are one, one, one and one, then you will get one output. If both are true, then you will get one. Means here you will only get two if this expression is true and this expression is true, then you will get one. Otherwise, you will get zero. Okay, this is a double and not a single and. Single and we will discuss. That is called the bitwise and. That is called the bitwise and. Single and means bitwise and. We can write double and. Okay, we can write double and single and means if you are writing two single and two, you will get the different answer. But if you are writing two double and two, what is the output you will get? Any one. What is the output of two double and two? Any one. What is the output of two double and two? Again, you are making the statement. Some students are right. True. We will get one. We will get output as a one because here we are getting non-zero value. This is a true statement. This is also a true statement. True and true, you will get. Okay, so we cannot write two. Clear. Now, someone will ask you which one is your better program? This one is better or the second one is better? Anyone, which one is better? In which case we are using the more number of if else statement? Anyone, in which case we are using the more number of if else statements? Blindly, we cannot say which one is better. Just you can compare how many if else statements we are going to use. One, two, and three, we are using the three if else statement. If you are going for second one, how many if else statement you are using? One if statement, second and third. You are using three here also. Here you are also using three because just you can see a greater than equal to b and a greater than equal to c. This is also one if statement, and here you are also getting if statement. Means basically this expression containing two if statement, two expression, two expression. After that, again, we are using the AND operator. Here you can see, here we are only using three if statement. But in the second one, you are using three plus one AND operator. Means definitely first one is better as compared to second one. Just you can see, in the first one, you are going to use 
only three if statement. Second case, you are using three if statement and also you are using one extra and operator. So that will also take some time. That will also take some time. Okay. So definitely first one is better as compared to second one. If you are going to compare, first one is better as compared to second one. Clear? Now, the same program you can also minimize. You can also minimize. Okay. Just you can see. Here we are writing this one, this one. We are going for the algorithm. I have already written this algorithm. Basically, we are compare, comparing based on the number of if else statement and and operator. Number of if else statement and and operator. Okay. No, this is three if. Just you can see. Here we are writing a greater than b and b greater than equal to c. Just to get it. This is also one expression. This is also expression. So basically, we are getting two expression plus one and operator. This is not a two if statement. There are three if statements are there because this is also one type of if statement. This is also one if. This is also one if. Okay. Now next one we are going for the next. Okay. So now in the next class we will discuss about the for loop. If you have the time, then you will go through that. This approach, this approach, how to find the maximum and minimum. So this one. So in this case, basically, what we are going to do. If a statement I have already mentioned, if you are writing a greater than b, means you are writing one expression, one if expression. Now you can see a greater than b and b greater than c. How many times you are doing that? Comparison. How many times you are doing the comparison? Anyone? How many times you are doing the comparison? One time or two time? You are doing one time or two time? Anyone? Two time? We are doing two time, not three time. Two time. We are doing two time. One time for this one. Second. If someone will ask you, ten, two, three. Can you find what is the value of this expression? Anyone? What is the value of this expression? First, we will check ten greater than two. One time we have already used comparison. Second time we are also using comparison. So basically, this one will contain two comparison. Same like that. Just you can see. In this case, we are writing here single comparison. We are writing here single. Okay. Now assume that. Try to understand. Now assume that if this comparison is taking one millisecond time to compare the value, if this comparison is taking one millisecond time to compare the value, now can you tell me how much time it will take to find the output of this expression? Anyone? How much time it will take? If single comparison is taking one millisecond, how much time it will take? How much time it will take? Definitely, it will take more than two millisecond. We cannot say like that exactly. It will take two millisecond. Definitely, it will take more than two millisecond because first we will take one millisecond, and here we are also taking one millisecond, and after that we are going for and definitely it will take zero point one millisecond. But it will take some time. It will take some time. It will take some time. And if you are going to find what is the time it will take for whole expression, it will take definitely more than two millisecond. Okay. Now, based on if you are saying this, you are only two if you are strongly saying like that means you are saying the time taken to execute this expression and time taken to execute this expression both are same. Can we say both are same? Can we say both are same? If you are going to consider both as a simple if statement, can we say both are same? How much time it will take to compare this expression and how much time it will take to find the value of this expression? Both are not same. If it is taking X time, then definitely it will take more than two X time. Definitely it will take more than two X time. Clear? So in this subject, basically we are not going to write the optimal code. You can use any one, but when we will discuss about the algorithm analysis and design. Then in this case, definitely we will prefer those algorithm which has the less complexity. Which one will take the less time to find the value? Okay. But in this subject, basically we are not going for which one is efficient. Your main objective, whether your program is giving the actual output or not, whether your program is giving the true output or not, this is the objective of C programming. In the next semester, we will study about the design analysis and algorithm. In this case, we will find which algorithm is your best algorithm. But in this course. You can use any one of the algorithm. Your task is not to compare which one is your best. 
okay your task is only to fulfill the user requirements 